My name is Brandy. I'm with Brush by Brandy, and this week's video we're going to showcase this mid-century piece using a whitewash technique and a blended finish and the new Dixie Belle transfer line. This little cabinet is such a cutie. I absolutely fell in love with it. It has a little bit of a mid-century vibe. So I started out by first pulling it apart. I pulled the doors off of it, and I could tell right away when I was cleaning it that this was going to be a bleeder. You can see how it started bleeding in a yellowy brown color. That's my tannins from the wood being leached out by my cleaner. So I wanted to start by the inside of this by first working on this. And the inside was a little bit rough, had some stains in here. So I went ahead and cleaned that really well. And now I'm gonna give it a coat of Dixie Belle paint and silk. And I chose silk for this because silk has a built-in stain blocker. So knowing that this is a bleeder, I know that that's going to protect my paint from discoloration. Um, and then I don't need to seal it either. So it'll be really nice and wipeable for the inside of this cabinet. All right, the inside of my cabinet is done. This is one piece, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this two. Got really good coverage on that raw wood in just one coat. Okay, so now let's talk about my finishes. I'm pulling my inspiration from this transfer right here. You can see the color inspiration that I got from it. This is the Latin floral transfer by Dixie Bell. And you can see where I'm getting my bright colors from. Okay, so with that as my color inspiration, what colors am I going to be using? I want it to show up on whatever I put it against, and I want something kind of bold, so I chose Dixie Belle Kernel Mustard. I know, you're probably thinking I'm crazy, right? But I'm going to tone it down a little bit with some chocolate, and then I'm going to highlight it with some buttercream. So those are my three colors right there, Dixie Belle Kernel Mustard, chocolate, and buttercream. Okay, so my legs are all taped off so I get a nice clean paint line. And now I need to start laying some products onto this piece. So what do I need to start with? Well, you remember my doors. This piece is a bleeder. So I got to put on some Boss. Boss even tells me that I need it. It says blocks odors, stops uh, stains, and bleed through. So right there, I'm going to choose Boss in gray because it's the closest in color to my finished color. Another way to tell if your piece is going to be a bleeder is this right here. Do you see that? That's a knot. Knots are surefire signs that it's going to bleed. So take a little bit of your boss, and this goes on just like a paint, and I can cover those right up with my boss. So I'm going to go ahead and finish giving this a coat of my boss. It's going to take two coats, so I'll do a second coat of my boss and a second coat of my nautical on the inside of the cabinet. And then this piece will be ready for some paint. I do want to preserve these brass... Um, hardware fittings, only they're glued into these doors and I don't want to break the door trying to get them out, so I'm just going to paint around them really carefully. Okay, you guys, so I started to paint this and it just wasn't jumping out at me whether this was the right color or not. So let me show you a little bit what I did to help me decide on my color. I went ahead and did my one side here in the color I was thinking, and then I could hold my transfer up there and see if I like that as a background. I even peeled off the backing sheet on it so that I can hold it up and see it with the clear backing against the color. Now I like this here, I like this, but let me show you what I ended up deciding to do. Here's the part you guys are not gonna believe. This color is holy guacamole. I actually chose to paint something holy guacamole without even being forced to. So if I hold this up to the holy guacamole, I just like the, co the contrast with the colors a little bit better. And I even have a little bit of holy guacamole here in my transfer. So that was how I ended up picking the final color for this, is I tried one color on each side and I held my transfer up and decided which one I liked the best. My winner is holy guacamole. So now that I have my main body color chosen, which is holy guacamole from Dixie Belle, I needed to choose a color that I wanted to shade it with. Now I wanted to go darker. I didn't want to lighten this color anymore. So I wanted to go darker. So I chose midnight sky, which is one of my favorite colors for shading with. So I'm going to use a combination of holy guacamole and midnight sky on this piece. To blend this side out, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of water on top of this first coat here. And then I'm just going to give myself a fresh coat of paint to work with. The water just helps to lubricate the surface a little bit so my paint glides on so much easier. I have pretty good coverage from that first coat. And I'm going to get up here under this lip. I always make sure to look at my pieces from different angles so that I can see any spots that I might have missed. And I'm going to give myself a nice clean even coat across the front. I brushed it on every which direction, but then I always come back and clean up my brush strokes so they're running all the way across the front of my piece and don't stop in the middle. So 
Once I have a nice clean coat of paint on, I'm going to go ahead and start working in my darker color for shading on this piece. So I'm really feeling the greens lately, and I think holy guacamole is in line with that. So I'm going to take a little bit of my Midnight Sky, and I'm just going to darken these crevices here with it. So just a little bit on the tips of my bristles, and I'm going to brush that right into the corners. I'm just going to work on one side at a time. And then I'm going to pull it out a little bit into my holy guacamole. Let's go ahead and do the other side. I am going to pull it out a little bit more on that side. And then I want to go ahead and get down right here too. Just gives me kind of this nice frame, but I don't want it to be super dark. I just want it to look a shade deeper than the holy guacamole. Okay, and now that I've got my basic framework laid out, I'm going to start working in this midnight sky. I'm just brushing it with my same brush and brushing them in together. And that's kind of my basic look. Now I just need to work on cleaning it up. I'm gonna come in with my oval medium and I'm just gonna brush out some of these brush strokes. I'm just gonna work these colors together with a dry, with a dry neutral brush. I, I lost some of my dark down here in this corner, so I'm just gonna darken it back up again. Just give me some paint to play with. I wanna make sure it's nice and even going all the way around. All right, how's that look? All right, let's go ahead and work these colors into each other. I'm gonna use the swirling motion just to pull them together and then I come back and I clean that up. Swirl it into each other and then come back and clean this up. And then one more side over here. I'm going to swirl these together and then come back and clean it up. Making sure I get in all the way up there in the corner. And then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to clean up my holy guacamole in the center. I did not add any paint to my brush, but I'm just going to true up my color in the center a little bit. All right, I like that look there. Just gonna even up these corners. I feel like that's a nice even. I have a little, that's just my shadow that you're seeing cast onto this corner right here. If I move it out of there, you can see I feel like that's a nice even shadow around the edges. With my paint finish complete, I allowed it to fully dry before coming back to apply my transfer. You want to make sure your paint is completely dry because a transfer will not take if there's any moisture left in your surface. A few tools I like to have out when I'm applying a transfer are a pair of scissors, my transfer tool that comes with the transfer itself, um, a razor knife, and then also one of the Dixie Belle finishing pads for burnishing my transfer afterwards. I start out by laying my transfer in place and rubbing over it with the transfer stick. I'm lifting away the backing sheet as I rub it. Um, this is going to come completely loose once my transfer is fully applied. This transfer design will require that I seam two pieces together to cover this door. I chose to hide the seam of the two pieces right in the crevice of this door. You'll never know once this is done that these two pieces were joined together. We are going to work with some wood bleach. So my wood that I took down to a bare wood, I um, stripped it all. I'm going to go ahead and apply some wood bleach. And this is the, this, it's called oxalic acid. You can get this off of Amazon. Um, it's pretty easy to use. It is kind of nasty stuff. So you want to make sure that you're wearing your gloves, um, a mask, and then make sure your uh, space is well ventilated. You won't even realize what the odor of it is until it kind of hits you. So the instructions say a heaping tablespoon to about three ounces of water. 
So I'm going to get my heaping tablespoon and I'm going to stir it in. I don't think it hurts that you can, you know, over mix it a little bit. Um, it may take a few applications, but you can see this little bit of water makes more than enough um, for me to do a few applications with. This is hot water. Um, and I'm just going to stir it up until it dissolves completely. And then we will go apply this to my bare wood. Okay, I've got my oxalic acid. I am wearing a mask, so if you can't hear me, that's why. But this stuff does hit you. You don't even notice it. Um, you can see that it's nice and mixed up. It almost just looks like clear water. Um, it doesn't burn your skin or anything. It just has kind of a strange odor that makes you kind of cough a little bit. And then you just apply it. Now, it can, like I said, it can take a few applications of this to actually bleach your wood. I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to let this soak in and dry and I'll probably come back and check it tomorrow and if I want to I'll do another coat depending on what my wood looks like. So we're going to I'm going to finish coating this. We'll let it dry and come back and take a look at it tomorrow. I ended up doing three coats of my wood bleach and it took all of the orangey tones out of this wood, but I still wanted to whitewash it to give it an even more clean look. Bleaching your wood, you need to make sure that you clean the surface really well and then neutralize your wood bleach. I used a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water. With my surface fully clean, I'm going to whitewash my wood. I'm using Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in White Magic and a chip brush. The gel stain does have a tendency to set up fairly quickly, so you want to make sure that you keep it wet while you apply over the full surface. I then wiped away my white gel stain using a rag and long, even linear strokes across the top of my piece. To finish this one off, I sealed everything with two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide Clear Coat and it's complete. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. You can find more Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushedbybrandy.com.